it's small. Guys, um, I'm very happy tonight to have the, um, the whole Pocket team, some Pocket friends, believers, investors. I'm Laszlo Sabo, the CEO of Skills, and we're running Pocket Notes for more than a, a bit less than a year now. Um, I met Michael right in 2019, um, Berlin Blockchain Week, and he first uh, explained what Pocket was and, and what was the, the old philosophy of it. In beginning of 2020, um, we just uh, had a call, and I, I told him, oh yeah, come to Paris, man, and, and let's do an event for ETHCC 2020 in March. We, we were running uh, private nodes at the time, and you know the event was uh, quite different. And during first quarantine, you told me, uh, hey man, uh, would you like to spin up the network with us in August? Mainnet is going live, and we need the infrastructure provider to, it, to do it. And you know, it turns out to be uh, one of the best choice we made. Um, and again, like betting in the philosophy of having a Web3 infrastructure, decentralized way to access blockchains. And now we, we, we started with 75% of the network. Hopefully we don't. We don't have this, uh, this, <laughs> these shares yet, so it's, it's less than 20%. In, and we will surely you know, have, uh, have less and less, and, and the network will surely be more and more decentralized in the future. But uh, we're kind of very happy to kind of um, fast the um, one year. Uh, it's going to be next week, but let's assume it's, it's tonight. Uh, one year of mainnet. Um, so again, uh, very very happy tonight to to have Adam that's going to and Valeria that's going to talk about uh, this one year uh, retrospective. Michael uh, will <clears throat> that will talk about um, what's new on Pocket and a little bit of the of the DAO. And last but not least, uh, Sebastian, one of our lead DevOps that's going to talk about Pocket topology. So please uh, give a big round of applause to Adam. Thank you so much. Um, so my job here tonight is to basically take you through about the last year of Pocket Network. Uh, but first, I'd like to just quickly introduce myself. Uh, I've been with Pocket for about two years now. Um, I have this kind of affinity for kind of the intersection between entrepreneurship and technology, so that's why I'm here at Pocket Network. Um, I'm partially French, which is the French connection here, and uh, I've got a few other things. I am a cat dad, and I've got no casual headshots, so this is why you've got this horrible image of me. Um, my role here at Pocket Network is econ and operations. And so I'll launch right in. For those of you that don't know, uh, Pocket is a blockchain agnostic, decentralized infrastructure platform. And so what that means is we're basically your one-stop shop for our decentralized RPC endpoints. And I'll keep going here. If it will, oh. Sorry, I'm skipping ahead. So let me get to the origin story a little bit. Uh, we began building smart contracts on Ethereum in about 2016, 2017. We were playing around with Web3, uh, and then we realized uh, very quickly how much the ecosystem was reliant upon Infura and how bad that was for a decentralized network. And so we created this thesis around decentralized infrastructure. We spent the next couple of years uh, building the team, publishing the white paper, building out test nets, MVPs, and eventually mainnet which was, as Laszlo said, about a year ago. And so you're probably wondering, OK, great. So uh, how does it work? Um, and I am using a one particular use case. There's a couple different ones. But uh, for the purposes of this presentation and setting up Valeria for later, we're going to talk about accessing via the portal. So uh, we've got a little bit of symbology here. Uh, applications connect directly to the Pocket Portal. The portal kind of sends those relays on, so your requests on to a s one or more session of Pocket nodes. Uh, those nodes end up communicating with external blockchains like Ethereum or Polygon, so on and so forth. And then the requests end up coming back. We call them relays, so if I slip into our lingo, that's why. Uh, the requests end up flowing back through the system back to your application. And again, uh, this all happens through uh, a decentralized network of nodes and the pocket portal. 
So you're probably wondering, okay, you've got a token, right? So like, what does the token do? Our token is PLKT, it's called Pocket or Pocked, depending on who you are and what kind of time of the day it is. Um, so app users, uh, basically you're rate limited by the amount of Pocket you stake on the network. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, we rate limit by session, which I won't get into as much. Uh, but uh, essentially think about it as you need a certain amount of Pocket for a certain amount of usage and it's very proportional. For nodes, uh, Pocket uh, gives them access to run as a node runner. So your node uh, stake is um, 15,000 minimum, um, and you do that as kind of a security deposit to keep you acting in good faith and prevent any bad acting. And so you're probably wondering like, okay, so why go through all this effort? Why build this decentralized infrastructure? so on and so forth. So we, we kind of believe in this philosophy of relying on a protocol, not a company. So if you rely on one of our competitors, you're relying on uh, you know, essentially layers and layers of backups. We eliminate all that backups, cut down on price, and increase redundancy. So we don't really suffer from downtime, we suffer from degradation, which means that some nodes in your session is bad, and we send those back to our failover nodes, and so you basically end up with what is 100% uptime at all times. Um, additionally, uh, we've got no kind of real middleman. We've got fair pricing, so no real sunk costs. If you don't like pocket, you can take your pocket, unstake it, leave the network, go sell it, and you're, you're probably better off for it. Uh, we also, by sending your requests to various sessions, and you can do many, many sessions, which means you send it to many, many, many nodes, you're splitting your requests across a bunch of different nodes, which means no one's got a clear picture of what you're actually up to which means you've got a super private, super secure uh, connection. Additionally, Pocket is governed by the users. So we've got the Pocket DAO, which is a pretty um, strong uh, representation of the users of Pocket Network, and they vote on all the basic parameters and issues. So let me talk about the last year. So we ended up launch, er, wrapping up in, Incentivized Testnet. Uh, about a year ago and launching mainnet uh, July 28th, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, along with this, we ended up releasing a few of the first products and uh, an MVP of our governance system, which is the Pocket DAO. Uh, since then, we've been hard at work on new revisions of Pocket Network or Pocket Core. Uh, we've released a new product or a, a new process that allows us to spin up new chains in a matter of weeks, if not um, you know, at most a month, depending on how long it takes to sync the network. Um, and we are working on the final stages of Wrapped Pocket, which will be a farming tool for a farming app uh, so that applications can further subsidize their infrastructure by their users. Um, I'll let uh, Michael kind of carry us forward and talk about all the new and exciting stuff, but I'll kind of hint at it right now. So where are we at today? We've done about two billion relays. Uh, which is a drop in the bucket when it comes to infrastructure, but it is an indication of traffic and uh, traction on Pocket Network. We've got about 4,000 nodes today. We kind of fluctuate between four and 5,000 nodes, so we're easily the largest tenement chain or tenement fork in the, uh, in the uh, Cosmos ecosystem. And we've got about 12 chains, about three clicks away for developers. And that's all thanks to the Pocket Portal. Um, so I'm just going to real quickly, maybe, oh, I'm going to take you, here we go. Okay, I'm going to take you real quickly through some hard-fought lessons, just as kind of a debrief or a post-mortem about the last year or so of Pocket Network. So my first point is, uh, this shit is really, really hard. <laughs> You're building uh, not only a company, you're building uh, basically what amounts to be a country, an economy, a uh, governance system, uh, and it all is uh, really, really involved, and it takes way longer than you think it will. Um, another takeaway here is, is cool tech isn't everything. Uh, relationships really matter in this business, and we shouldn't kind of discount that. Um, it, it, at the end of the day, it's all about people, and it's all about what they need, and so you've got to really cater to individual needs um, and they're not going to want to lose their job over what amounts to be like really cool tech. Um, we've done really well with kind of our, our scrappy persistence, and I would encourage all of you that are out there building something uh, to keep up that persistence over the course of time that will win over hearts and minds 
of your ecosystem. Uh, we've been kind of blessed in the way we've kind of gone through things, but we've always done the thing that gets us to the next milestone, which allows us to do the very next thing, and that's really been an important part of our story. Uh, finally, I'll wrap up with these. Um, you know, like we've, we've been focused really hard on, in the last six to 12 months of, of building the foundation of Pocket Network. That sets you up for the rest of the, uh, the entire um, protocol's life cycle. So if you do it wrong the first time, it's probably not going to be, you're probably not going to have a good time. Um, I will say that it takes a village. Our core team is great. We've got very talented individuals, but you need outside contributors. You need people that have different perspectives and uh, the core team can only take you so far. So invite the people that will add value into your ecosystem and, and put them where they can add a ton of value. Uh, we believe that genius is everywhere. We have a highly diverse team, but that doesn't only end at the team. It also ends at contributors, people in the DAO, th things of that nature. And everyone has something to contribute in their each little own way. We encourage you to find clear roles and then uh, put them in the seat in the bus that uh, manage or that, that benefits the protocol the most. And uh, we, I would encourage you just to kind of meet them where they are. And so with that, I'm gonna hand things over to the lovely Valeria, who's gonna take you through a little bit of the pocket portal. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we're gonna to try to set up a quick demo. Uh, we didn't get a chance to set up before. Uh, yeah. I don't know if anyone has any questions about how the protocol works or anything like that. Yep. Well, we set it up, but I'm happy to answer anything while we set up the next question. Okay. Yes, that one. I don't want to. I don't want to be too Isn't obvious, but I'm little, fairly little, new to little, Pocket, little. and so I was wondering, like, should I see it as a as a competitor too in Fura, or okay? Can you present it, please? Uh, so that's a good question. We are a direct one-to-one -one replacement for Infura, uh, but we do a bunch of different chains that Infura now doesn't support. So um, you. when you're thinking about uh, where we come into the ecosystem, that's pretty much right at that intersection. Um, silly question. How do you uh, guarantee SLA? SLA? Yeah. Yeah, great question, and it's something our competitors do that we do not. Uh, we rely upon the benefits that we have in the protocol to guarantee some sort of uptime. We don't provide any service level agreements or anything like that. We may in the future, but uh, you know, not at this time. Yeah, it's pseudo randomly selected. So the question was, uh, like, how are the how are the nodes in the requests kind of like divvied up throughout the ecosystem or throughout our node network? Uh, they're pseudo randomly selected, so you get paired with a, uh, a session, and it could be multiple sessions depending on how you configure your stake. Um, and that pseudo random selection puts you in these these groups of sessions, and that's how the relays are distributed. Yeah, you get you get integrity uh, uh, guarantees on the integrity of your data through two ways. Um, we use uh, zero knowledge range proofs to make sure that the nodes aren't lying about the amount of relays that they do. And we have a challenge system between the application and the nodes that they're with. So you can think of it as like a rough consensus. Uh, we have sessions with groups of five nodes. So if one node answers with an answer of, you know, you're getting a balance, one node answers with an answer of 20, the other four answer with 15, uh, the application can actually submit a challenge transaction and have that node be burned. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, that's sort of the two ways that we ensure the integrity of the data itself. Uh, we kind of have the SLA at a protocol level, if you will, uh, in terms of the uh, redundancy and uh, the, the integrity of the data itself. Okay, so there's really the consensus on each query, right? There's only consensus when the application wants to do it. It's not enforced. Uh, it's pretty flexible in that sense. So otherwise that would be, that would be very expensive. <laughs> 
Yeah, and it's, uh, it's, it's stateless. So the nodes within the session are not communicating with each other uh, uh, as well. So it's up to the application to decide whether they want to submit a challenge or not. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully that answered your question. Yeah. Good to go? No? So brothers are very shy, and when you try to show them, suddenly... We're actually going through a timescale DB upgrade, <laughs> right, as this was starting. So as a result, <coughs> some of the data wasn't showing on, on the dashboard that we're about to show you guys, so... Good. So then let's start a little part from my side. Who am I? I'm Valeria. I'm one of co-founders of Pocket Networks. I'm an industrial designer that turned into the blockchain space some years ago. And since then, I've been very motivated to work in this space and put my design skills and service of providing more usability to the network. What do I do in the team? I design. I work in branding, I work in product, UI, UX, and sometimes I extend my hand still marketing to use some visual help to communicate and get closer to the users, bringing, again, usability to all the products that we create. Um, we are trying to build a product for the users, and as Adam just mentioned, we face a lot, a lot of challenges every day. One of those challenges in the product side is how do we get this uh, closer, when, how do we lower the barrier of entry for applications to the Web3 infrastructure? how to make easier for developers, for creators, to access to this network of really decentralized applications. <laughs> we have uh, this very robust networks of full nodes providing high quality infrastructure and we have applications with very creative solutions that they don't need to really run this infrastructure, these uh, networks and they don't really need to run nodes. We let professionals and we let people that are interested in running really infrastructure to access to it. How do we do it? That is our challenge. How do we give them an easy access to this infrastructure so they can really concentrate and they can really focus on building awesome products that bring closer the blockchain solutions for normal users, like we are users more specific of technology, but we want to get applications to get closer to more mainstream users and give more uh, better experience of the blockchain to everyone. So we did it, we think about it, and we create a product, we create a UI where we give access to the network in a platform where we provide some, CL, some, um, some access to application and nodes to the actions and the network. But, fail fast, they said. We try it, we test it, we build it, and we saw, like, we make it very complicated for users. We make it, we try to achieve a lot of things, we try to provide a lot of uh, things through the dashboard, and it was good. It makes us grow, and it makes us think differently, because these applications need solutions, fast solutions that they don't take care of a lot of information that probably are going to distract them and make their journey through access to the infrastructure longer. So right now, yeah, here we are. Today, I'm going to present you our new product, like this is what we are working, currently working on, that is the portal, the pocket portal. Why do we call it portal? What's a portal? It's a gateway, it's an entrance, it's a way to, to go to other space. Our goal, our objective, is to create this, a way to access to Web3 infrastructure to any developer, to make this product a way to allow anyone to build on Web3. I really don't have to take care of all the infrastructure side, but just uh, an easy um, building tool. Right now, Let's go over some screenshots. My intention was to go over the product that we're having an issue. So let's go over screenshots because it's a better backup. It's very easy, just a simple registration. You go, you um, verify your account, very easy, and then you are in. Once you are in, 
you are going to have uh, this view where you just have to give a name to your application. Simply identification, you select one of the, <coughs> one of the 12 networks that we have available for users to connect. Right now, we, are, uh, we have available uh, users to connect to Pocket Network, Ethereum, Avalanche, Polygon is something coming very soon, XDAI, Fuse, and Binance Chain. So just by uh, selecting one of those networks, you are going to then click and launch application, and you are in. You are getting an endpoint ready to use. You copy and paste it, in, and you replace it for your old legacy endpoint, and your application is ready to relay data into the network that you selected. This example is connected to Ethereum, and this application will be able to run data to Ethereum very fast, just like that. Here we have a, um, a small dashboard when you have some valuable information for you to track what is happening with the infrastructure that you are driving your application, because that's also a problem that we saw developers need to be realizing where is their infrastructure going and how it's behaving. Uh, very fast, let's go over the information. First sections give you the success rate and the latency, so how fast is responding the network to the calls that you are doing. And if you click in more details in this part of the panel, you will take a look, a diver look of the request, where which one succeed, which one go fail, and you can classify it and take action on it depending on whatever um, errors you're having. If we go back and we scroll down a little bit, we are going to see the current use and the weekly use, an overview of how your application is going. You have to take care that your application don't go over this one million relays because that is what we are uh, right now subsidizing while you um, deploy an application, when you connect an application through the dashboard. So that's the limit after, before, uh, if you go above that line, then your application will need more relays and you have to find a bigger solution with our sales team. <laughs> and if we take another look to the panel in the other side, oh no, if we scroll down, there is more information. We have latest related requests. We have there is some organization of the information and you can really take care of what is your application behaving, how is consuming the data that you are relaying. And the panel on the side, we have some major CDAs. The first one is the application security that we have on the top and is an extra layer of security that we suggest every application to have on. And the second, the second one and the third one is the white legis agents and the white origins just to protect where, you're coming, uh, where the data is coming for your application. Make sure you save your changes and you go back and the other setup that we have, uh, we allowed is to click the notification setup. The notification setup allowed users to make notifications upon their consumption of the infrastructure. We have very easy toggles turn on and off in this percentage and you will get an email when your application go around those limits of consumption of the infrastructure. And last but not least, we have the network overview here. Uh, we have a general uh, reading of how is the, um, the network behaving, what is running, and right now, this is uh, a screenshot of based on design, but right now, I'm glad to share with you that we are over the 18 million relays served this week. So this is dummy data, but real data is above 18 million around that. Uh, what else, what, what other data we have here? If we scroll down a little bit, we are going to see the available networks that we have. Right now, you will see more than 12 networks and also different um, nodes where you can connect it. And um, here is again some uh, closer look. And here are the networks that we are supported and how they behave, behave in our network. Right now, we have nodes and applications at stake for each one of these networks. And, um, we are very excited that soon we are having more networks joining this list and more applications stake on the, on, the, on the portal. The summary in general, today we have more than, more than 600 applications registered on the, on the portal and we have a stake uh, over 
500 applications uh, and we are relaying over 40k uh, relays in the last seven days and I again I will update this data because this week we go over this uh, this number. What is our product vision? Where do we want to take this product? Right now, as I, may, as I mentioned, users just can log in, get an application, get an endpoint that is fully subsidized by Pocket Foundation and get one million relays to drive their, their relays. But our idea is to make this product your product, to make encourage others to replicate the same product and run their own gateways, run their own portals for themselves, for their products, or maybe for their businesses. Because our idea and our project vision is always to encourage others to build on top of what we do. So that's it, that's the product. Let me take another look, but we didn't get it, but it's going to be working in a couple hours, I, I assure you. <laughs> Mike, I get it, it's you now. <laughs> Whose phone is this? It's this one. Ah, never mind. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you, Vala. Thank you, Adam. And thank you, Laszlo. Um, thanks for coming. Uh, I'm just going to talk about a couple things. Uh, but first, a little bit about myself. Been in Bitcoin since 2013. Um, I studied international studies in college and taught myself to code. Changed my life. Uh, we started writing some smart contracts in Ethereum back in, in 2016. And that's uh, 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 really that's the best five dollars I ever spent uh, on that uh, on that avatar. So, um, what I do, you know, I'm the CEO of Pocket Network Inc., which is the company that built Pocket Network and strategy and and, and hype man sometimes. So, um, I'm going to talk first about the DAO. Uh, Pocket has a really unique governance system. Uh, Adam mentioned that we're building a country, and that's kind of how we thought about designing the governance system of Pocket. Um, it's uh, a, a, a permissioned democracy. So we don't do token weighted voting in Pocket. Uh, anyone can actually claim a vote, permission. Uh, uh, and I say permissioned because you actually have to uh, uh, complete some quests uh, uh, to actually uh, prove that you have knowledge of the protocol that you've participated in and, and done so. Uh, so what I mean by that is you know, if you're running a normal node, um, you submit a series of quests through the Pocket Arcade on our Discord. You can think of this as like the metaverse, if you will. And this is what allows uh, our governance system to be civil resistant, so that you can't create many identities, for example, and have many votes. It's actually one person, one vote. Uh, we use things like Bright ID, and really, no, you know, it's, it's really hard to automate any of this. So uh, it'll probably get progressively more difficult over time as people do it. But we've seen some awesome success. We have 14 voters. Uh, we started out with five, so nine people have claimed this, uh, claimed their votes in the last year. Uh, which is really cool, uh, 22 proposals uh, uh, and about 500,000 pocket has been granted for various tools and, and these sorts of things and uh, 100 arcade cl quests claimed. So it's, it's really cool when you see people submitting their, that, you know, signing from their nodes uh, that, you know, I've been running my node for three months, for example, and you just go ahead and sign it and, uh, with your private keys and that's your proof uh, and it's, it's really cool. So, so that's a quick update on the DAO and, you know, there's different paths that people can claim votes. You don't have to be a technical person. Uh, you can be a community member and, and kind of help on, on marketing and BD and that kind of thing and actually claim a vote in the DAO. So it's something that we're really excited uh, to see how this, how this evolves over time. Um, I want to quickly talk about the next 12 months. So uh, really, we're just adding a lot of chains <laughs> uh, really quickly. Um, we added 10 at once uh, a couple weeks ago, and uh, we're really excited about all the Layer 2s. Uh, really excited about products like IPFS and Ceramic. Uh, because uh, you actually basically have Amazon S3 <laughs> decentralized uh, with Pocket and something like IPFS or Arweave or uh, Ceramic is super interesting as well. Uh, so we're really excited about Pocket and how it can incentivize people pinning uh, this information on their local nodes and this kind of thing. Um, and of course, you know, 
uh, once we get through kind of uh, uh, these, these early ones, we definitely want to move towards supporting parachains and, and tendermint chains and these sorts of things. Um, and we really see Pocket as kind of one interface to access uh, uh, Web3, to be honest. Um, uh, there's going to be a couple uh, new models, uh, business models that come up in the next couple of months. Uh, so the portal that Valeria just showed uh, is completely open source. Um, so anyone can take it, copy it, and run it themselves. Um, uh, someone asked about SLAs earlier. Uh, we have some people that are running, uh, uh, trying to run the portal and um, uh, to, for enterprise uh, uh, customers, for example. Uh, so people can actually become their own infrastructure provider without actually having to run the infrastructure because <laughs> you're just passing through the requests to the network itself. Um, it gives you a very big competitive advantage in terms of pricing and this sort of thing because effectively when, we're, when, we're, when you get these million relays, we're just staking our own pocket in the back end there for you. So, um, uh, and all you need to do is change the amount of pocket that you're staking or, or you know, however it is that you decide to do your model. So really excited about that. Um, in a couple of months, we're launching Wrapped Pocket. Um, this is really exciting for us uh, because it's actually a way for people to crowdsource infrastructure. Um, uh, so this will be an Ethereum token, uh, ERC-20, and uh, we're using the um, uh, token geyser smart contract from Ampleforth and effectively, you'll be able to stake on behalf uh, of applications that are already on Pocket. Uh, and those applications will be able to basically take those relays that were staked for and basically have a permanent free tier should they decide, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, uh, uh, since Pocket's a, you know, it's a tendermint chain, it's an application-specific blockchain, uh, uh, we're actually working on building the bridge now. Uh, the actual wrapped Pocket app is built and ready. Um, so we're just uh, uh, figuring out the right way to build the bridge at this point in time. Uh, so we're really, really excited about that. Um, and then in the next 36 months, um, you know, one thing that we've really learned over this last year is um, uh, uh, this, this shit's really hard. <laughs> and um, uh, we've really, um, you know, we're, we're kind of seeing this first iteration of the protocol as more of a beta. Uh, beta. And we've been really working on thinking about Pocket 1.0 uh, and what that looks like. Uh, we're hoping we can have that out by next year. Um, uh, but, you know, for example, today Pocket doesn't support WebSocket connections. Um, we can't have unbounded service nodes, even though that's what we decide. That's what we designed the protocol around, to have thousands, hundreds of thousands, or even millions of nodes around the world. Um, what that will allow are things like Pocket US West, Pocket US East, Pocket EU, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but we need to reach a critical mass of nodes around the world to be able to do that. Um, so, so Pocket 1.0 is really, really excited. Uh, we're, it's something we're really, really excited about. And um, uh, uh, yeah, I think we're going to be releasing some of the. Um, protocol talks uh, of the team kind of uh, thinking about this and, and kind of how we're, how we're thinking about solving this problem. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of a quick overview, uh, really, that you know, I wanted uh, Adam and Valeria to, to really kind of show off what we were doing. Um, but, uh, but yeah, thanks for coming. Happy to answer any questions. Uh, like I said, the portal's it's open source. You can check it out. Uh, I definitely recommend. So like we, had, we were having problems because we were actually upgrading our, our time scale database uh, at this exact moment in time. Uh, so the data wasn't showing, uh, which was kind of, you know, painful, but it, either way. So, uh, but yeah, thanks everyone. Huh? Ah, it works. Yeah. 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 I don't know the login password for this. You, you launch your products faster than you can learn. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, there we go. So this is one of our users. Uh, we're, we're integrated with Ethers.js, if you're familiar with it. Um, hopefully the data loads. <laughs> So we basically pre-staked Pocket to allow this to happen like really fast. Um, we have 15-minute block times, uh, which is kind of uh, different in the space. We're not a transactional cryptocurrency. It's really just meant for applications to use really reliable, redundant infrastructure, full node infrastructure. So, 
Yeah. So kind of, it's kind of working a little bit. We're getting there. <laughs> but, but yeah, so if anyone has any questions or anything, anyways, thanks for coming. We have a bunch of t-shirts. We have beer. Uh, I think we're all going to go to a ledger party later, hang out. So yeah, thanks, everyone. Well, we got some network data here, which is pretty cool. So, um, if you see, we're doing about 18 million requests a day on the network right now, which is pretty cool. Um, so, so, yeah. Cool. Thanks, everyone. Oh. Uh, this is more of like a broad question, yeah. not really specifically for Pocket. Um, but, you know, with a recent like graph going decentralized, and there's more services like API 3, who's trying to decentralize API access. And now with the um, Web3 connectivity being coming, you know, decentralized, what do you think is like the next kind of area for Web3 stack to kind of focus on for decentralizing the access or yeah. any other, you know, services? Yeah, I think uh, things like Handshake, ENS are huge. Uh, privacy, um, uh, things like Hopper, NIM, these kinds of protocols. Um, I think, you know, basically like the base layers are decentralized, but what's happening is that we're getting kind of bottlenecks as we go up the stack. So. Um, uh, I think we're going to see many, many different uh, kind of verticals with, you know, dozens of protocols under each vertical kind of trying to solve a specific solution, personally. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's more about just crowdfunding. How is it going to work for the, the normal users? First of all, why would they do that for the protocol other than they like them? And second one, if a lot of them like kind of like get out of it, and then the protocol doesn't have enough stake anymore. Are you going to warn them in advance? Like, how is it going to work? Yeah. So I'm just going to ask, re repeat the question. So, yeah. so the incentives for for the for incentives for basically the, the you said for the crowds uh, funding pocket. Yeah, for yeah. the yeah. pocket. So you're going to have users basically stake the pocket to help a project. Yeah. Other than the fact they love that project, which yeah. is always good, but you know uh, they're yeah. always going to be like, "What's in it for me?" Yeah. And the second ones, like a lot of them, kind of like get out after. What's going to happen for the project? Yeah, gonna, so, so we're going to over collateralize the stakes. Um, uh, we got approved, um, I think it's 10 million pocket by, by the DAO. Um, uh, so uh, uh, we're going to put a good chunk of that in the smart contracts. Uh, and you'll earn some yield, basically, for, for, for staking on behalf of applications. So um, it's a bit of an experiment for us. If it continues, um, we'll continue to fund it uh, if the community wants it. Um, uh, for context, the way the rewards work in pocket um, the DAO actually receives 10% of all inflation. So, you know, if the DAO wanted to, you know, allocate, you know, a tenth of a percent uh, uh, and kind of feed that into the smart contracts, well, then, you know, the DAO could if they wanted to. So, uh, and can kind of keep funding that in perpetuity if they wanted to. So, yeah, and making sure we're over collateralizing the stakes so that, you know, if someone wants to unstake, uh, uh, you know, doesn't, you know, ruin everything as well. So, yeah. Good questions. Thanks, everyone.